very impressive number of shots onto that sentry, securing their team. Just that added level of, of, of security to the yeah. win. All right, we've got our next match shaping up. We'll see how this start is. The early game is definitely the most important thing. Um, really sets up whichever team gets this early advantage very well for the rest of the match. We see both teams using the same strategy, not bringing any other robots, although this blue engineer deciding to do his own body blocking and just come in position on the red side of the map at the Mineral Island, not even looking at the Mineral Block, just turning around and bullying the red engineer, pushing him all the way back out of the Mineral Middle. Now he's backed up by blue standard three, but red is sending their standard and their hero up as well. This is the bloodiest match that we've seen so far. Super aggression uh, coming across from this blue side. Blue hero one now taking some early shots, landing some early shots on that outpost. Three. Already down to 1400 health. Four. Blue team playing some crazy strats. They don't care about the gold because if you can't get the gold, nobody can get the gold. Blue team has shoved off the engineers. Neither team has been able to get a mineral. The blue team has been able to land a surprisingly large number of shots on the outpost. Four shots landed down to 1,200 health, a huge HP lead in the early game. None of the standards able to get a kill across, although this blue standard three is looking like he's in trouble. Ooh, One shot, shot, shot coming across from the hero, able to take out blue standard three. Wow, red team coming back and striking hard with the kill advantage, going to give them a slight gold advantage and XP advantage, which is huge coming across from that hero. You can see he's now the first robot to hit level two. And now that blue hero is going to turn his attention to the outpost. That was such a Taking large these shots. shot. He's hitting them very consistently. There it is, another one down to 800 health. If no one checks Four their display, like we were just talking about, he might be able to take down this entire outpost. Red standard four, did notice. Red Standard 4, great map awareness, great job of turning around and noticing uh, that you should probably have someone come and defend your outpost. But this outpost is down to 600. The Red Engineer tips over. Oh my goodness. F's in the chat for the Red Team. Their Engineer is down. Their Hero is down. No one will be there to revive the Hero because that Engineer is sideways. That will spell disaster for the Red Team. Oh my goodness. What a devastating turn of events for their team. The blue team now is going to just not... It's their game to lose. As long as they can play intelligently, you can see the blue <laughs> robot... Talk about intelligent play right there, man. I mean, he's pushing him ah, into a bad spot to get revived. There's no revival. Their engineer's down. I think that oh, yeah, standard that's right. is literally just adding insult to injury there. That dead hero was actually in a pretty advantageous spot, blocking their own outpost. But, you know, sometimes it's in all... In all good fun to go and just give your dead buddy a little shove. We can see the blue hero lining up those last two shots that he needs. One more shot to take down this red outpost. Doesn't look like anyone is going to be able to stop him from doing so. This is the best dialed hero we have seen all week. There it, there is. it is. I would reckon that hero didn't spend more than 12 rounds taking down that outpost. Only costs a total of 10. Wow, wow, wow. Blue team really taking advantage of, uh, of this incredible situation that they have. Um... The really mineral with the blocks advantage are they have over the red team. Too. All of the mineral blocks are there. Does the blue team care about minerals now? I'm not sure. The the driver for their engineer doesn't seem to still. Um, what a what an aggressive man, but it sure did pay off. They now have the outpost advantage. Gold is still tied up as they've chosen not to take any of those minerals. The blue hero one returning to that same spot. A bit of a curious strategy. He's gonna hop right off the curb though. Ambush them, go straight for the sentry, drive right past the sentry, zoom around to the other high ground. He knows. He's watched Star Wars. He knows where it's at. And he's going to take this position here, which should protect him from the sentry and allow him to just take pot shots at that top extra damage plate of the base. Great strategy from the blue team. He knew exactly where he was going. He didn't care that there was a sentry there. He didn't care about the damage he might take from it. And we're going to get this great angle here of him trying to hit those top armor plates. Which do more damage That's as right. Well. Because the sentry is not down... The base does have an HP shield you can see there detailed in white on the HP bar. But he's but hitting it. It's decreasing. Great, great map awareness. And you can tell the blue team has put time into strategy for this game. They called the plays. You knew. You saw that blue hero. I wasn't sure what he was trying to do. He inched up to that same spot. And I said, what's he doing? The outpost is down. But he knew where he was going. Ripped across the map. The line he had, I'm sure, practiced and looked at to get into that spot where he's protected from the sentry, able to do some damage to the base, not able to chunk all the way through that shield, but able to reduce the shield pretty significantly. The blue engineer 
in Blue Engineer fashion, we need to give this man a nickname. What's a very aggressive name? He doesn't care about the minerals. He has access to all of them on both sides of the map. But nope, he's just here to body block um, and, and to be that thick, tanky support player. Yeah, he was taking Incredible. those shots in that top bottom barrel sentry and I mean they weren't connecting because he was just able to turn and to get his maybe get his lights to light up for that auto targeting to go and hit the top of his robot that was not doing any damage whatever he was doing he ends up having a reasonable amount of health we see the blue hero play. taking the exact same path this is what I'm talking about goes to the same place on the road trying to get through you can see that the two red standards are now actually blocking him from going in this hero is smurfing for real First player token also calling out the engineer for smurfing. Super true. We're seeing some excellent strategy and driving coming across from the blue team. They should be able to close out this game without any problem. I'm hoping to see a base kill. If they can finish off this base within base within the next minute and 15 seconds, they will be able to finish the game in that manner. Although it looks like they will choose to try and continue lining up this shot using these qualifying rounds as a practice for the further um, more important rounds to come. They're allowing this hero to dial in these extra high damage shots. You can see that these armor plates are the same size but are at an angle which is going to reduce the amount of the armor plate that you see in your own point of view shown here in this beautiful layer on layer heads up display. There it is. Very, very small target that you got to hit there too. Oh, but he, he hit it. it. One more shot should break the shield. There it is. They've dealt 100 significant damage to the base. If he can land another one, he will just be chunking into the raw HP. There it is. Two more damage dealt. 200 more damage, excuse me, dealt to the base. 200, 200. Wow. The hero now dialed in, just taking pot shots over and over. The blue standards just running around, keeping these red standards busy, which is a, a great strategy we've seen employed. Just protecting this blue hero, allowing him to deal as much damage as he chooses stay as long as he likes really playing that offensive line for him keeping him safe from the red team and that red hero being out early as we see on that blue outpost mm -hmm. i mean so that's sad. all your structure damage right there in one robot really as long as the red team can keep their engineer afloat in the next match uh we should be able to see a, a little bit closer of, of a round but oh, wow Ooh. blue really took the cake on that one and that i mean i'm always gonna say it the engineering of hitting those shots accurately you can shoot as fast as you want but hitting them is really what matters and seeing an exhibit a great exhibition of skill and design go into that hero go into all those standards they were able to win those skirmishes that engineer really employing a great strategy what a wacky strategy yeah well if you automatically <laughs> heal you may as well take some damage sit in a place that possibly is probably going to get you auto targeted because whenever you come back online you have a small portion of invincibility so if that sentry is targeting you especially with that double barrel setup i mean that could waste a whole bunch of look ammunition. at this the blue team fired 31 golf balls their hero did all of the damage they only used 147 uh, 17 millimeter projectiles out of those standards only one kill each per team the blue team has a unique but effective strategy they don't care about the kda they their entire strategy is centered around getting the hero to be able to sit in front of the objectives and just land those accurate golf ball shots here it is the mvp for sure of game one being highlighted look at that nice carbon fiber wrap a bottom fed hero the cool hair or the flame job or whatever we're calling those cool swoops off the gimbal of this hero absolutely incredible wow stunning visuals and stunning performance i mean you can really tell that this team has a lot of experience or at least a lot of practice in making these things function flawlessly man i mean doing that also having the time to practice the strategy that they have i mean that hero ran a route that he knew like the back of his hand straight Twice. to a spot that's oh, a yeah. blind spot for that sentry being able to plink at that turret without even having to go through the trouble of taking that down because that red sentry was quite the beast being at both top and bottom barrel as we've seen quite a few times and just seeing those those are very intimidating because you know whenever that thing's bobbing up and down all you can see on that camera is just a stream of bullets coming at you that is quite an intimidating thing to push into and that red sentry did do a decent job until it did run out of ammo because of the overwhelming amount of numbers that of the blue team being in that spot and that engineer really absorbing a lot of that damage and healing it off there not having to retreat back to base he doesn't have to go get ammo he didn't even care about the mineral blocks because they were just able to get that one kill early that gave him enough to get that ammo to really change the tide of that game and especially once that red engineer flipped capitalizing on that and being okay i'm the biggest guy on the map 
I'm gonna go bully these guys, and I'm gonna push them out of the way and show them who's the boss. Chat, what do you think? If that engineer doesn't tip over in this next match, does the red team stand a chance? Can they figure out how to put down this strategy? Having such a unique and effective strategy does have one large drawback. It's probably relatively easy for the red team to predict what the blue team is going to try to run down this next match. First player tokens does have a great point in, in pointing out that the KDA does not win you these matches at all. You can get as many kills as you like, but as long as the other team has an objective advantage at the end of the match and it's not an objective tie, that damage dealt to the KDA is not going to be the difference maker. So blue team strategy, very valid. We'll see if the red team can uh, adapt fast enough and keep their keep their uh, engineer nice and surely footed on the ground, wheels side down uh, throughout the match. That should play a huge difference. As Remember, they actually played two robots down for the majority of that first game. Yeah, and the real question is going to be, will the blue engineer employ that same strategy if the red <laughs> engineer is off all, all the time? Because as we saw, the end of the game had five of those mineral blocks in the middle. I mean, if you're able to supplement the gold income with kills, it's the, the mineral blocks in the middle are worth just as much as a kill. So if you're able to get a kill, it's kind of like you're getting a mineral block. So if you're playing hyper-aggression and you know when you have confidence in your robots and your driver's ability to be able to hit everything on target, get those kills, get that gold, that's going to be really important in deciding if you're going to go for those mineral blocks or if you're going to use that big body engineer with a whole bunch of health and that natural healing as a tank as we just saw and the real question is did they have that strategy ready to go on the fly and adapt if that engineer either got knocked offline or the engineer fell over because as we've seen a couple times the engineer is the one that is prone to fall over the most but is also the most important for that passive gold income trying to be like more passive not getting as many kills you can supplement that with a good engineer that is able to get those two mineral blocks back to base. I mean, that's two kills worth of gold, 600 gold. That's enough to launch your aerial. That is way more than enough to supply your entire team multiple times of getting refilled on ammo. And that's very, very important whenever you're talking about skirmishing because not only is, you know, the life of your robots a valuable resource, the ammo that they have is also just as, as valuable, if not more valuable, especially as we saw with that absolutely decimating shot from the hero if you hit that on, if you're able to spend enough money and have enough 42 millimeter projectiles to take a gamble, hit one of those robots with that, that will knock that robot almost out of the fight. We've got a great question coming out from Speed asking about that tag on the back of the gimbal. Um, it says pass on it. So what that tag is, I actually know when you do the referee system check, um, before your match, you go to each station where they make sure that your robot is in compliance with all of the rules and they check off each of those little circles and color them in green. And that's how they check each of these robots for their size, their weight, their power consumption, um, the firing rate of their, of their projectiles. Each and every rule that these teams have been given to compete uh, is checked before every match and is marked down on that, uh, on that play pass. We see the Blue Engineer going for the same initial strategy where he just charges all the way up. That's right, KevCC. Same answer. I agree, 100%. It's a pass card. It's just telling you that that robot is good to go. It's legal in play. We see the blue hero back in his spot, doing what he does best. Blue engineer, doing what he does best. Mr. Smurf, just in there, hyper-aggressive, blocking the hero on the red team, actually, from being able to get in there. This is playing out pretty well for the blue team so far, but blue standard 3 is taking quite a bit of damage, not able to deal that back. Red standard 4 takes a little bit of damage, but still a great trade for the red team initially. This it might have been a bit of an overextension by the blue team. They do get one standard hit on the outpost. Not really going to be a big deal. Uh, probably as this game goes on, we expect to see a lot more damage coming across on each outpost. Really shouldn't be a significant amount of damage. We see the red team now resorting to... What would we... I'm about to say a more typical strategy, but he also doesn't go for the mineral blocks. Both of these teams are on the same wavelengths. Their engineers are now in this hyper-aggressive alpha mindset. The hero so close, just high of the armor plate, trying to line up that shot again. He's thinking about starting his, his bottom base in a spin to win, but that is going to make it probably a little bit more difficult. Does land the shot while spin to winning, though. He's dropping a little bit of health, still at more than three quarters health. Should be just fine to sit there and continue to take pot shots. Red standard three is going to change targets, realizing he's not going to be able to take down that hero from that range. The blue hero missing the next couple rounds. If he can start to connect on those like he did in game one, it should be pretty quick done and dusted for that outpost, only needing another nine shots to take that outpost all the way out of the game. And you can hear them missing, though. 
We've got uh, we've got the blue engineer having to back off a little bit from his hyper aggressive play style. He does need to heal, but he's an engineer, so he auto heals throughout the game. He's got that Warmog's armor on stack, ready to go. Red engineer now saying, two can play at this game. Let me get in your base and see how you like it." Playing all the way up past all the robots. We'll see if he can soak up any of this blue standard or this blue sentry's ammo. Um, that might be might be an interesting strategy to employ as the engineer has so much health. Blue blue hero one gonna drive right on past him keeping true tr true to their tried strategy blue team There's letting that, that hero ignore did he, he just flew right oh he's not flying over it the ramps on the red side on, oh, on this yeah, side yeah, on the blue yeah. side on the other side. i was about to be shocked i was gonna I, we say i'm like man. Go over it uh but we see now the red engineer very cleverly in the hero spot Saying, if you come over here, I'm just going to shove you out of the way. So the blue hero finding a new location is a lot farther, though, if he's going to be trying to hit that outpost. You can see that that's a much harder shot to line up. We see the driver in the bottom left-hand corner of that of that picture-in-picture. Picture. Was able to connect one shot, bringing it down to 1595. Still a pretty significant health, um, in a health difference for the blue team on the outpost. Both engineers continuing to play this odd skirmish-based style, kind of just ignoring the minerals throughout the match the red engineer though has been spotted by blue, blue standard three who's going to communicate to his teammate hero that, that 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 spot his favorite little perch is back and open for business blue standard three in a little bit of trouble does level up gain some health and is able to zip away without any issue we see the blue team reset everyone's going back to base getting new health getting new ammo the red team now pushing up from uh the engineer leading the charge we see all three of the aggressive robots on the right hand side of the mineral island the engineer being joined by the hero on the left they're gonna pinch in on standard four who is three to one outgunned and outnumbered the blue engineer can do a little bit of body blocking here but surely this blue standard is gonna have to back off and run back to base this is going to give the red team a significant amount of time to be able to deal a ton of damage to this outpost. That red engineer now playing a very important role, keeping blue standard for in the mix, not letting either of those two low damage health robots retreat. And now hero one on the red team surely is going to be able to land one last hit onto that engineer, onto that blue four standard, and get kills on both of them. But he might not, as blue standard three comes in, is able to shove that hero off, is able to push back that red offensive, and the blue team still just doing a wonderful job. We see the dart launcher open up on the red side. We pause. We wait with bated breath. Sometimes the darts fire. Sometimes they just open them and close them. All right. This is just one of those open and close teases. Wow, wow, wow. What a match. This is definitely one of my favorite matches to watch so far. We've been just absolutely treated tonight with some really close matches unique strategies you can see the engineer has been given a slight penalty probably for ramming someone that blue engineer wouldn't put it past him um that man is is a player he is where he wants to be and you cannot get in his way there's that, that aerial. aerial up baited breath once again waiting very stable hand. Very, very stable, stable. we've got the six propellers and only two legs notably uh, now that now that we know those legs can sometimes get in the way, it's first you're, blood. was that really first blood? Oh my goodness! Wow. The on red the hero. hero is down on the red side. I can't believe we made it this far into the game without anyone dying. These teams have been playing just at the edge of their health bars, retreating at just the right time. Excellent to see such strategy. The blue engineer is a player because he does crush a lot. We do love this blue engineer. We love to see it. We love to see these unique strats come out. He's still just he's still just in the mix, messing with that team. Neither team choosing to touch any of the minerals. A gentleman's agreement, one might say. The uh, the red standard three though able to take a good chunk of damage onto that outpost, but the blue hero again returning to that farther distant shot is still chunking away, having. A little bit less accuracy from this farther position, but it doesn't much matter as long as he can stay ahead of the red team uh, uh, as far as damage goes. And they do have about a 400 damage lead on the outpost. He's going to move up to this closer position as the game is coming to a close. 30 seconds left. It's going to be really important to keep that health advantage. Blue Standard 3 doing as much as he can to keep Red Standard 3 off. Red Standard 3 totally ignoring him and going for the outpost instead, trying to get that damage done. We see the blue hero zooming out. He's got 20 seconds. He knows where to go. He's going back to that perch. He can take the damage. He can be killed. Remember, that KDA means nothing. All he's got to do is land those hits, and he does. One shot in a row. Two shots in a row. Three shots in a row. Six hundred. Four, four shots in a row. Five, five shots. 
Six shots in the outpost is oh down. My wow. Gosh. Clutch plays from this blue hero. Definitely the MVP of the match. He pushes in. That's going to be the game. Two seconds, one second. Runs on out. Blue team. Absolute props. I'm not sure how you bullied the red team into not taking any minerals either. But hey, your strat works. Your strat works. Absolutely incredible. Wonderful performance by their hero. Definitely the star of the show. Incredible accuracy throughout the match. Interesting to see that they went with the same strategy of ignoring those mineral blocks. That blue engineer was on a quarter health bar, I'd say for the vast majority <laughs> of the game, really playing the edge, really like just somehow staying alive, somehow not getting first blooded whenever all those other robots were surrounding him. Maybe the hero was scared to use the ammo. Maybe the hero was scared Oh, I don't want to like try to push up too far. I want to let the standards try to take care of it and let my infantry move up as I'm sitting in the back with my super heavy artillery, not trying to make himself super vulnerable. Because as we saw, that hero was devastating with that accuracy on those bases. Again, look at the stats. For what a skirmish based game this was, only one kill coming across. Just a, a game of map control. The entire.